Are you a public figure by virtue of being a professional wrestler? Am I a public figure by virtue of being on this YouTube channel? And if so, how does that change the way people can talk about us? I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It, and today I want to use this forum to go public with a conversation I've been having privately for the last couple of days about a subject I think we could all benefit from learning about, and that is what constitutes being a public figure. Both what that means societally, but also what it means legally. And those are two very different things. Now, you might imagine that being a public figure must mean that you're an exceptionally famous star or that you've achieved celebrity status, but that is not entirely correct. Being a public figure means that you live or work in the public eye. And so, I always remember this. All celebrities are public figures because they live or work in the public eye, but not all public figures are celebrities. You don't need to be ultra famous or have achieved celebrity status to be considered a public figure. And so to answer the questions that I posed at the very top, am I a public figure by virtue of presenting this on YouTube as a free platform? Are you a public figure by virtue of being a professional wrestler who works in the public eye? The answer to both is yes. But apart from how I define being a public figure, there's also a very important legal definition for being a public figure. And this serves to contextualize cases of defamation in a court of law. When someone defames you, that could fall into one of two categories. It could be considered libel, which is written or published, or it could be slander, which is spoken. So if you are a public figure and you decide that you want to take someone to court for making defamatory statements, libelous remarks about you, you have to satisfy a much higher standard of proof than someone who is considered a private figure. And even if you happen to be the least famous professional wrestler of all time, yes indeed, you are considered a public figure. If any of this is something that you've considered, either presently or at some past point, you may have wondered. If you brought legal proceedings or a lawsuit against someone or a group of people, what would you have to do to prove in a court of law that you had been slandered, that you had been defamed, that someone had said something libelous about you? Well, there are two main things you'd be asked to prove in a court of law. Number one is that the statements or remarks are false. Because if what they said happens to be true, it is not considered defamatory in the eyes of the court. But this second criteria is what sets public figures, like professional wrestlers, apart from private figures. It sets a higher standard of proof in the court, and that is this. You must prove that the comments or remarks were made with malice. And legally speaking, that means the comments were intentionally made to cause harm. Now, that doesn't mean that they were intentionally made to hurt your feelings. That is irrelevant in the eyes of the court. Harm can be done to your business. Harm could be done to your brand. Harm could be done to your reputation. And you might have to quantify that in front of the court by demonstrating how it cost you business, like bookings or merchandise sales or something else tied to dollars and cents. Defamation of character, if it is delivered via social media, is considered libel because on that platform it has been published, whereas slander is something spoken aloud. The most common defense against cases of this kind are to claim that the statements in question are simply opinions because everybody is entitled to their opinion. Every single user on social media is entitled to their opinion. And so, a common defense is to claim that the remarks that are considered defamatory were not stated as fact, but offered as opinion. 
And even though the exact protections of the law are different for public figures than they are for private figures, that defense comes up more than any other and makes it very difficult to successfully prosecute somebody in that type of case. Being a professional wrestler does mean working in the public eye and even being a relatively unknown professional wrestler like yours truly, means that I satisfy the definition of being a public figure in the eyes of the court. And I happen to know this firsthand, because quite a few years back, I had looked to bring a defamation case against someone who had slandered me. And I thought I had a slam dunk on my hands. It would be easy to prove that the allegations were false, and I thought my legal team could easily demonstrate that these comments were made with malice. But the process of preparing to take this kind of legal action proved to be quite an education for me, and I was presented with four eye-popping realities that I will share with you now. The first thing I learned was this. Based on how these cases tend to go when they are not settled out of court, and a quick aside, if that's new to you, that is when the two parties agree to finish the proceedings before it ever ends up in front of a judge or jury. It is a settlement that's made outside of the court system. For cases like this that are not settled out of court, I should expect to budget out one to two years of my time in which this case would become my main focus. And in preparation for that, I needed to promote someone from within my company to take over all of my responsibilities so my main focus for one to two years could be this legal proceeding. And the second eye-popping revelation was the monetary budget. I was told a minimum of $50,000 would be needed to pursue this, and if it went the distance a full two years, a maximum of $150,000 to cover just the legal fees. And of course, upon hearing that, I thought to myself, I don't have that, and I sure as heck don't have that. The third thing I learned was that because I am a public figure, I would have to satisfy that much higher standard of proof. I would have to demonstrate to the court's satisfaction that these comments were made with malice, intent to harm me. And I could spend all of that time and all of that money, and if I failed at that step, I would lose the case. The fourth thing I did not expect was that if the case somehow became high profile, it could cement the slanderous comments in the popular discourse. It would become part of the conversation of the day. It would actually accomplish the exact opposite thing by drawing media coverage to what had been said. Once I heard all of these things, it made it easy for me to decide I could not possibly go forward with that. I didn't have $50,000 laying around to chase this down. I couldn't dedicate one or two years of my life with this as its primary focus. That was not a sacrifice I could afford to make. Because I chose to be a professional wrestler and I perform in the public eye, that makes me a public figure. And that means the rules I play by are different than those of a private figure. In the last few days, a number of people had reached out to me and they were all poking around roughly the same topic. They were asking, what recourse do we have as professional wrestlers against people that offer defamatory remarks that might rise to satisfy the definition of libel or slander? And I want you to know that the most efficient way to go about handling that is most likely appealing to the administrators of the platform where these comments or remarks were made. You may find that it violates their terms of service, and in that case, that user might lose their privileges to post on that platform. And yes, of course, you always have available to you court proceedings, lawsuits. That is the reality of the society that we all live in, and especially here in the United States of America, which is an exceptionally litigious society. Lawsuits are a reality. However, like me, you may need to do a real risk versus reward analysis if you decide that what you want to do is take a person or party to court over the remarks that they've made. And in my case, I did that exact analysis and came to the realization I simply couldn't go forward. What I needed to do was just get on with my life. It's getting really noisy out there. Can you hear that? I can hear it. It's very distracting. So I'm going to wrap things up. I hope that you learned something from today's video, and I hope it was helpful to you. Whether you're at the earliest stages of your wrestling career, just making that transition from being a fan into becoming a performer, 
or you're late in your career, constantly confronted with new challenges, this is for you. This channel is for you. I make till we make it for us. So you keep on being awesome. I will keep on making the videos together. We will keep on faking it.